Over the last couple of years, I've tested out almost every Mac from absolute base machines to super powerful Max chips. And one pattern that I see a lot of is people saying that the base versions are useless or no one should buy the base config. And I gotta say, I don't think that's exactly right. They definitely aren't for everyone, but I found them to be more than capable. And there's some concerns with general performance and longevity that I'd like to address, which I think often get misrepresented. And that's what we're gonna do today. So with that said, let's get into it. Hey everyone, Kyle Erickson here. It's pretty widely known that the base Macs offered, whether that's a Mac mini, an iMac, or an Air or Pro MacBook come with some underwhelming specs. They all start with eight gigs of RAM, a 256 gig SSD, which let's be honest, is lower than what most people want. And the prices, especially for the storage, in my opinion, are way out to lunch. Apple basically bumps each spec up in $200 increments. So to increase the specs on one of these can get pretty pricey. And I'd say a lot of people are gonna bump these up by at least $400. But do I think everyone should do that? Not necessarily. The base Macs are actually a lot more capable than people give them credit for. The ones that I've used personally on the channel like the M3 iMac and the M2 MacBook Air have been surprisingly smooth and for lighter use, I've never really felt any slowness at all. Even with only eight gigs of memory for simple things like web browsing, using productivity apps and consuming media, those all stay well under that threshold. And I'd say for most people, that's probably all they're looking for. There's quite a few people out there that are just answering emails, using office software, going on Zoom calls, or just browsing the web or watching Netflix. And if that's all you're doing, you really don't need much more than this. But something that does come up often as a counter argument with this is sure, all that stuff works now, but what about a couple of years from now? Like in a couple of years with advancements in tech, will we be using more memory and system resources to the point where these base Macs don't run anything? Well, taking into consideration the fact that none of us can predict what the future is gonna look like, especially when it comes to tech, I will say, I don't know how likely it is that productivity and entertainment based things will change all that much. Use cases like those are generally a pretty easy lift and I can't foresee checking emails and making text documents and presentations changing all that much. And if you're building software for anything productivity related, your user base is likely gonna be across the globe. And in some places in the world, people are gonna be using machines that are a lot less powerful than this. I know myself having previously worked on apps that were being used in some developing nations, you're always testing out things to make sure things work on the most basic machines, both with processing power and slow network connections. And I think in general, the more people that you have to support, the slower things are gonna move. With more niche apps that deal with creative workflows, sure, a machine with eight gigs of memory probably isn't ideal, especially since a lot of these creative apps need over eight gigs to run. But if you do have to do that work in a pinch, even when memory swapping kicks in with these M-Series Macs to compensate for the lack of RAM, a lot of the time you don't even notice. I used the 15 inch M2 MacBook Air for about six months as a travel laptop, and I edited a couple of these videos on it. Sure, there were times where it would slow down and I couldn't run multiple resource heavy apps at once or anything like that, but for the most part it was still totally usable. And I think just the fact that you can do something resource heavy like that on one of these machines is worth noting. It wasn't all that long ago that there was zero chance of that happening on a laptop unless you spent a lot of money, and while that does tax out your hardware a little more, it's probably not something that you need to worry about in terms of overall wear. A base MacBook Air with an M2 is gonna run you about $1,000 USD, while the M3 version will be 1099. And around that price range, a general rule of thumb is that it's probably gonna last between three and five years. And within that span, I'd say the battery is more likely to fail on you before the chipset is. There's also the question of storage. 256 gigs isn't a whole lot, but Again, for a lot of folks doing productivity related tasks or just streaming content, they probably won't need a lot of internal storage. You can always store files and apps on external drives if need be, and the difference in speed on the internal drives is likely something you're not gonna notice. Especially with basic workflows, SSD speed is never gonna be your bottleneck, and in general, for a lot of folks, any of these specs probably won't mean much. A base Mac is still gonna have amazing build quality. All the MacBooks and the iMac have great displays and sound, and overall, any M-Series chip is pretty snappy. Just talking with some of the folks that I know who use base M-Series Macs daily, they're still really happy with them. So I think the idea that these are useless 
isn't entirely realistic. Does Apple want you to upgrade the configuration to something more expensive? Sure they do, but they're also not gonna pump out a bunch of products that are paperweights either. I've got a lot done on them, and I think the M2 Air at $999 or the Mac Mini at $599 provides you with a ton of value. Are they for everyone? Absolutely not, but I would much rather have one of these base machines than any of the old Intel Macs with 16 gigs of RAM, hands down. That being said, I wanna hear from anyone else out there who has had a base M-series Mac, whether that be an M1, M2, or the new M3s. Does it do everything that you need it to, and if it struggles, what exactly is it struggling with? Let me know in the comments down below because I think there's a ton of value in people sharing real world examples and usage rather than just speculating and looking at spec sheets, especially for anyone considering buying a base model. That's really all I wanted to touch on today. If you enjoyed this video or you found it useful, feel free to give it a like. If you'd like to see more tech related content or program a toaster with me to give motivational speeches while it perfectly toasts bread, please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next upload.